I ran a bar, so it was like the time that I was going to bed is now the time that I get up in the morning. I quite like being a morning person, she says now. Wait until I get to Friday, I don't like it anymore. Said very quick. Okay. What are they asking you to do? What is it talking about? Gajan. Gajan. You don't get used to it either. Their improvement in year one, you notice, is like amazing because they'll go from like very beginnings of stuff and then they just improve so quickly. So there's a lot of like satisfaction in that, I think. I went to secondary school in Dagenham. At the time, I didn't think it was necessarily a terrible school, but according to statistics, it was. My teachers were really amazing. They were so invested in me as a person, and I always remember that, and that team of teachers around me who cared. Wow! wow. Superworm. Superworm is super strong. Let me strong. Yes. I didn't go to university until I was 25 because I didn't think that I was capable of going to university. At school, I just did not think I was capable. And I think that's probably why I was so interested in maybe doing teaching, is that every child is capable. And it would be really nice to have that effect on someone that had an experience like mine, to be like, no, 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 you are good. You can do this, like, carry on. Getting a job in management, in a tuition centre, actually. And then, obviously, when I'm in the school, I'm seeing teachers talking about their students. There's so much light and positivity. And just sometimes they come into my office and they're just talking to me about this student did this today. And it was so amazing. And it took me a while to identify, but I realised I was jealous. I first thought, really thought about teaching during my university experience. I worked as a STEM ambassador. I was then suggesting that we work with the local schools. It was probably the easiest job I ever had. I really found that I was enjoying working with the students. We were working with some deprived areas in Brighton. And I got suggested that maybe I should look into teach first because we the kind of the uh, core principles overlap. Okay, there is a secret answer that we need to try. The focus of Teach First is being put into disadvantaged schools yeah. and trying to enact change there. A child's experience is only the teacher in front of them, and I think. For me, I want to be that teacher in front of them that if somebody else comes to them and says, you know, you went to a disadvantaged school, they'll be like, well, not really. My teachers were amazing, so how could I be disadvantaged? First lesson was my year 10s, and it was just a welcome lesson, but I planned it like down to the moment they lined up outside. Planned it the way I was taught in Summer Institute, which was helpful, so I didn't feel like I was completely out of control of what was going on. The hardest part of it was the night before and the day before, because you kind of play out in your head what could go wrong, what, and there's so many things you don't know. The lesson itself was fine, the students were okay, I think they were just trying to size me up to see how the new teacher is. Once they got used to me, they realised, okay, this is what we're going to do, and it was, I actually found it to be one of my hardest classes. Yeah. That's why you got the power of orange, because you were being so well behaved. I wonder if you can get some more power from the class. It's hard, because a lot of the time, like, you can see that things are going wrong, like, you're standing up there and you're like, this is going wrong, like, what's happening? But you, you don't have the experience to be like, oh, it was because I sat so-and-so with so-and-so and they don't like them. Like, just like tiny little things like that that you learn about your class. I wasn't expecting that you constantly feel under pressure that there's always something more you can do. I didn't quite realise. I thought in my head, OK, you plan your lesson, you deliver your lesson. You realise that there's always something you can tweak and improve. I didn't realise was part of the job. It is, it's a lot of work. It, it really is. But it happens really, really quickly. And I think I'm panicking a bit now because I didn't expect it to go so quickly. I think you need to be super, super organised, which I'm learning how to do. It's harder in ways that I didn't imagine it would be hard. And it's like easier in ways that I didn't imagine. A lot of the students who I found difficult, obviously I've given them detentions, called parents, and then in that time I've had a chance to talk to them about what's been going on in their own lives, understand their background and some of the things that they've been through that I could never imagine having through even at my age. You start to understand them better and for that reason my approach to them is different and how they come into my lessons is different because they see me differently too after that. <laughs> At the beginning of the term, I had one child specifically say to me, I don't like reading, I don't read. And then we started reading of Mice and Men, and then we have lessons where I read out to them and do all the voices and the different bits. And all the kids were just like screaming, oh my God, how could that happen? And it's just, 
remembering them saying, we don't like reading, we don't read, and then for them to get so emotionally involved in the story, it was, it just made me remember why I made the choice that I made. Who is working effectively? Who is doing their work properly? Let me see. I'm looking forward to knowing what I'm doing. Not that they're not achieving, but I'm like, you could do this, but I need to get you there. And I think I'm looking forward to Christmas because I'm almost certain that those strategies will be in place. We'll know each other a bit more. Like, I'll know more about the class. I'll know what it is that I can do to help them. Well done. Ima, love you. And also, I'm really looking forward to how cute they're going to be around Christmas and telling them stories about Santa. Like outside of school, can anyone give me an example of where we might use negative numbers? So just quickly have a think. I'll ask some of you. Maths homework. Okay, this is I guess you are outside of school. True. The impact that you have on a student might not even be in the time that you'll know them. It might be when they're suddenly at work and they're like, oh yeah, remember when Miss said that thing that time? It's just understanding that the seed that will sow in each child might not even flower by the time they even finish year 11. It might just happen when they're in university or even when they become a parent or at some point because even now I'm having moments where I remember my teachers doing things and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why they did that. And it, just understanding that there's that gap in between. So. There you have it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.